Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? I hope everyone is having an amazing, golden, victorious day in the Lord. So I'm coming on here to give you all some updates and to share a story that I read this morning that kind of had me saying, wow. Okay. So yesterday, first update. Yesterday, I sent out um, our first prayer to our um, email list. It's, it's, you know, I was able to compile my email list, my group together, and I sent out the first prayer mass email. So if you would like to get um, these prayers and, and teachings and such via email, I would encourage you to send me an email so I can have your information just in case you know, these social media sites decide they decide you know, decide they want to shut down, you know, our channel or Facebook page or whatever, you're able to still have contact with us, with the ministry. Amen. All right, so that's the the recent update. I'm so excited. You know, I have people all over the world just like send me the email to add my email and it's just beautiful it's beautiful to be a part of what god is doing we have more updates um that we will share with you later on i'm excited all right so let's go on this morning i was talking to one of the prayer warriors and i shared with her i said i saw a marriage certificate on the ground on the um, living room floor Excuse the noise outside driving. Um, so I said, there's, there's a marriage certificate, marriage license, you know, on the floor. And I told her, you know, who it belonged to. But I'm, I was paying attention to it. I'm like, why? Why, you know, is it on the floor? Did it fall out the drawer? Like, how did it end up on the floor? Then it, it was in the living room at first. And I looked and it ended up in the kitchen. And I'm like, okay, let me read this. And we began to read over the um, the marriage certificate and just began to break it down and, you know, just prayed, prayed quickly for the marriages, right? And I said, I was going to pray today for the marriages, amen? And so I cover all of our marriages right now with the blood, cover our spouses and, our spouses and us with the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, whom God has joined together, let nobody put asunder. And so I thank God for showing me that because I was already saying that June is the bridal month. It speaks of um, youthfulness and rejuvenation and such, remember? Well, June also deals with the brides and such. And we are the bride of Christ. And we want to make sure that everybody in our household is saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Amen. All right. So after I saw the marriage certificate and everything like that, an article popped up on my phone and it said bride dies of heart attack at wedding and sister marries the groom with her body in next room and I'm like huh so I'm going to share with you this is going to be part of our not my family series you know where we're praying, praying for our praying for our families and making sure that we're standing in the gap. Amen. You know, prayer is powerful. Faith, praying the word, fasting, everything. Oh, that's just powerful. Jesus said some things only go away when you pray and you fast. So let's read this article together and see what we can learn. Amen. So it says this article from USA Today. It says in a series of unfortunate events, a groom married the sister of his bride after she collapsed and died earlier in the wedding ceremony. The incident happened in India, okay? And so this they were supposed to get married on May 27th, but the wife passed away right there. And so it says during the Jamala, the exchanging of garlands by the bride and the groom in an Indian wedding, the wife collapsed and a doctor was called to treat her after she suffered a heart attack and so it says after the doctor pronounced the bride dead the families of the bride and groom agreed 
excuse me. Um, hold on, let me just make sure this, this doesn't make any more noise. Hold on, one second. All right, sorry about that. So it says, um, after the doctor pronounced the bride dead, the families of the bride and groom agreed the bride's younger sister, Nisha, would wed the groom, okay? And so this is just to me, it's a different culture, but I'm just like, huh? So imagine the bride is getting, you know, getting ready to get married and she's happy and she dies right there on the spot. And then now they're going to, um, the, the parents are going to give her sister to the man for um, the sister to be the new bride. Okay. Not, not my family. This is not going to happen. Not in our family. Nope. Nope. No, 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 no. So it said, um, this, this, um, matchmaking side matchmaking side excuse me matchmaking site site said that it's likely the families arranged for the sister to marry the groom because they wanted to keep it in the family and so it says um so it says the um patel the, the ones who work with the matchmaking said her mother was in a similar situation where her aunt died in childbirth and there was an idea for her mother to marry her brother-in-law. So much vetting goes into matching families in marriages and it is natural for families to want to stay together. And so her mother was unmarried and young, but her parents accepted her denial of the idea. So like, no, I'm not gonna marry my sister's, you know, well, let's say fiance, okay? We're not gonna do that. So it says, um. In the case of this couple, the families decided to go ahead with the ceremony while the dead wife was in the next room. Her, her, her body was in the next room. I just don't know about all of that. That don't sound sound right. It says, somebody said, um, it's a bizarre, a bizarre situation as the wedding of my younger sister took place while the dead body of my other sister was lying in another room. And that's what the brother told Times of India. Oh, wow. 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 And so, I just, I had to share that. It just seems so different, you know? But that's not something that we will co-sign to as a family over here. We, 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 we're going to do things in, you know, in decency and in order. And so, I just can't imagine having a wedding you know, after the bride drops dead. So not in our family, right? Not my family, we're not doing that. And so I just wanna cover all of our marriages with the blood of Jesus. I wanna cover the, the brides-to-be, the new brides, the wives, everybody, the spouses with the blood, the children, our possessions with the blood of Jesus. And I bind the strong men of death and destruction, divorce and separation, confusion, discord, whatever it is. I command it to melt and burn up completely with Holy Ghost fire in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen. And we stand on Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future and so I bless our marriages it is written the same way we have the marriage certificates it is written the marriage certificate that we have that lasts forever is the word of God is the word of God and we stand on the promises of the most high God and anything that's coming against our families must be bound and cast out must bow at the name of Jesus God's will will stand in our families, in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Father God, send your angels to help us, oh God, on this day. Father, we thank you. We praise your name right now. We tie the millstone from heaven around the necks of every demon, every problem, and we drown them out in the depths of the sea right now. And we rise up. We rise up in rejuvenation. We rise up in the blessings of the Lord. We rise up in the power of the Most High. 
in the name of Jesus, I release the Holy Ghost upon us. I release the fruit of the Spirit upon us. I speak reconciliation upon us. I, I speak restoration upon us. Father God, heal the marriages, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. Save, oh God, every member of our families, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for revealing Christ to each member, Father God, and those who are tied to us. Reveal Christ, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you for revival that's taken place place in our homes, Father God, revivals in our marriages, revivals in, in the lives of our children, revival in our finances, revival. Behold, I do a new thing, a new thing, saith the Lord. Old things are gone. Father God, I thank you for showing us your perfect will in every situation, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We will do nothing, Father God, in our own strength. We wait on you, we obey you, we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And all that we need will be added unto us, Father God. Help our children, our spouses and us to always seek first, always seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, Lord, so that all that we need could be added unto us, Father. Help us to walk in humility. Help us to come to you as a child, Father God. Humble ourselves, help us to walk humbly before you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for humility that's being poured out upon us right now. In the name of Jesus, Father God, right now I release Micah 6 and verse 8 over us. We'll talk about humility this morning in our morning um, prayer and teaching session at the prayer rally. And Micah 6, 8 was one of the verses that stuck out to me. And it says, God has shown us, right? God has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And so, Father, I thank you that everybody in our households, Father God, we are acting justly. Father, we love mercy, we give mercy, and we walk humbly with you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we allow you to lead us. We follow you, Lord, as you take us down the path of righteousness. We walk in agreement with you. We walk in shalom, peace with you, Lord. We act justly. We love mercy and we walk humbly with our God. Micah 6 and verse 8 is our portion. It's our birthright. Father God, that's your requirement. That's what you require. I release Micah, Micah 6, 8 over every husband, over the wives, over the children, over our nations right now. Father, we act justly. We love mercy and we walk humbly with you, Father God. You said, Father God, to walk humbly before you. There's no more pride. There's no more doing things our own way. I bind Leviathan. I put the millstone around Leviathan, around every pride, and I drown them out, and I release humility upon us. Right now, humility upon us, and humility and obedience upon us, holiness and righteousness upon us, faithfulness and gentleness upon us. I release love and joy and peace upon us, fruitfulness, gentleness upon us, wisdom, knowledge and understanding upon us. I release healing, health and wealth upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak rejuvenation upon us. Lord, I thank you and I praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.